Welcome to another episode of Fort Bend Mathematics Tutoring. Take a moment to soothe your nerves. Remember, these is just numbers. They can't hurt nobody. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today's lesson is going to be about graphing the sine function. That's right, trigonometry. Let's check it out, okay? So when dealing with the sine function, here before you, you have your generic format, okay, of the sine function. And that is, you would have it in the form of y equals to a sine of bx minus c plus d. So what does all this mean? Let's find out, shall we? First of all, the absolute value of a is going to be the amplitude. And what is the amplitude? That determines the height of the function, its extremes on the range, okay? So the absolute value of a was always going to tell you your amplitude, your vertical length, that vertical length of the function. Then the period, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be 2 pi over b, and your period is going to tell you your horizontal length of that function. In other words, from the beginning to the end, how long is that function before it resets itself? That's the period. Then when you're talking about the phase shift, we're talking about a horizontal adjustment, meaning that was the function shifted to the left or to the right, and where should we begin? Bottom line, your phase shift is going to tell us where we should start graphing on our Cartesian plane, all right? How to graph that function, where to begin. That's going to be the phase shift. Your vertical shift is going to be an adjustment, a vertical adjustment of your graph. So that D in that original function is going to let us know, hey, should we we shift this up or down and how many units to do that and finally and actually most importantly are your increments your increments are going to be the answer to your question when you said to yourself why did my teacher use those values to graph the function and why is it not always the same mm hmm you ever wonder why yeah that's the increments. In the increments, you can find that by dividing the period divided by 4, and you'll end up with perfect placement of your points on your graph. And that's what I'm here to show you, an easy way to do it and a precise way to do it that you can use every single time and get the right answer. And that's what you want, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and check out how to graph sine. Let's do that. All right, so for our first problem, we have y equals to sine x. And so we're going to start out by finding our amplitude. Remember, your amplitude is the absolute value of that a value. So here, your a value is 1. So we'll say that it's the absolute value of 1, which is 1. All right, that's the amplitude. Then, looking for the period, the coefficient in front of the variable x is your b value. So here, my b value is 1. So finding what 2 pi divided by 1 is will give us a result of 2 pi. All right, and that's it. Looking at your phase shift, remember that's going to be C over B. And here, my phase shift, my C value rather, is 0. See, I don't have a set of parentheses with a number inside of it. And then my B value, remember, is 1. So 0 over 1 is 0. So I don't have a phase shift. In other words, I start at 0 when it comes to my plotting. Okay. Then my vertical shift is also 0. All right. I don't have a D value there. And then finally, your increments, you can find that by dividing the period by 4. So my period here is 2 pi divided by 4, and that simplifies to pi over 2, which means that when I start at 0 for my x values, I then add pi over 2 each time to come up with my additional values that I'll use in my xy chart. And I'm going to use four more values. I'm starting at 0, and I need four more values. So I'm going to keep adding pi over 2. So 0 plus pi over 2 is pi over 2. Pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is pi. And then pi plus pi over 2 is going to give me 3 pi over 2. And then finally, I have 3 pi over 2 plus pi over 2. That gives me 2 pi when simplified. All right, so that's what I have thus far. Then I'll be plugging in these values, ladies and gentlemen, in to our original function, that y equals to sine x. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to either be aware of the values of sine by utilizing and memorizing your unit circle or using a calculator. So, of course, my preference is that you be as familiar with the unit circle and these values as possible. All right, so learn away, ladies and gentlemen. Taking the sine of 0, sine of 0 is just 0. That's right. Okay, so that's going to be that answer, 0. Then, plugging in pi over 2, a.k.a. 90 degrees, at 90 degrees, your sine value is going to be 1. Then, plugging in pi, sine at pi, is going to be 0 again. 
and then sine at 3 pi over 2, aka 270 degrees, is going to be negative 1. Once again, you can use your sine value or calculator or your know-how in order to come up with these values for sine, ladies and gentlemen. Finally, plugging in 2 pi into our function, sine at 2 pi is 0. And so these are going to be the five points that I'm going to plot on my graph. All right, so let's check that out. So starting out, we have 0, 0. So I have a point right here. Okay, then my next point is going to be pi over 2, 1. So I have pi over 2, and I'm going to go up to 1. Then at pi, I'm going to be at 0, so I have a point here. And then at 3 pi over 2, which is right here along the x-axis, I'll be at negative 1. And then next, I have the point 2 pi 0, which will take me right here. So next, all you have to do is just connect the dots. So I have this. So here is your sine function, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. If your teacher or your textbook requires that you have two periods, all you have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is repeat those same five points either to the right or to the left to come up with two periods. So you'll only need to graph truly one period, and then if they want multiple periods, you just duplicate that, those same points, going either to the left or to the right, and you'll be fine. Okay, so that's it. That's our first problem. That's graphing the sine function. Not bad, right? Okay, so let's check out our next problem here. Problem number two. In problem number two, we have y equals to 2 sine x plus 1. So here, if I'm looking for my amplitude, remember that's going to be the absolute value of 2, so that gives me 2 here. Okay? The period is going to be 2 pi over my b value, which in this case is 1, so my period is 2 pi. Then my phase shift, which is C over B, I don't have a C value here, so that'll be 0 over 1, which gives me a phase shift of 0. And then, in this case, our vertical shift, D, we do have a vertical shift of 1. And then finally, the increments are going to be the period divided by 4. So I'll have 2 pi over 4, which simplifies to pi over 2. So that tells me what to add to my starting point of 0 to come up with the other x values that I'll use in my xy chart. All right, And so what I want to do next is I want to kind of highlight these values that we'll need. The amplitude is 2, period is 2 pi, phase shift is 0, vertical shift is 1, and my increments are pi over 2. All right, so what I'll be utilizing in my xy chart, I'm going to start at 0 and keep adding pi over 2. So that means that next value is going to be pi over 2, then I'll have pi, then 3 pi over 2, and then I'll end up with 2 pi as the last value of the domain, aka the x values in my xy chart. Plugging these values into my original function here, let's see what happens. Sine at 0 is 0, so 0 times 2 is still 0, and then 0 plus 1 gives me 1, just like that. Plugging in pi over 2. Sine at pi over 2 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2, and then 2 plus 1 gives me 3. Now let's plug in pi. Sine at pi is 0. 0 times 2 is 0, and 0 plus 1 gives me 1. Plugging in 3 pi over 2, sine at 3 pi over 2, aka 270 degrees, is negative 1. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, and negative 2 plus 1 gives me negative 1. Finally, plugging in 2 pi, I have sine of 2 pi is 0. 0 times 2 is still 0, and then 0 plus 1 gives me 1. And so here are my five points that I'll use to graph the function, just like that. So here we go. Let's, let's get, this, get this centered here. We'll start out with 0, 1, all right? So that's my first point. Then at pi over 2, I'll be at 3. So at pi over 2, I'm at 3. So that's about right there. Then at pi, I'll be at 1. At 3 pi over 2, I'll be at negative 1. And then at 2 pi, I'm at 1 again. All right, so let's move that over so you can see. Okay, there you go. So these are all five points that I have graphed, ladies and gentlemen. So all I have to do now is just connect the dots. So let's see if I can do that with a steady hand. With a steady hand. All right, close enough. And there's going to be your graph, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. You got it. That was problem number two. Notice how... Not only because of the amplitude of 2 is this stretched out vertically, but also it's moved up 1. Okay, So if you notice that our center line here has been moved up 1 because of our vertical shift. So that vertical shift adjusts our graph upwards by 1. Mm -hmm. You got it. So ladies and gentlemen, there you go. That's, that's problem number 2. Let's check out the next problem. Problem number 3. 
Here in problem number three, we have the following problem. We have y equals to sine of x plus power over two. So starting out, ladies and gentlemen, our amplitude is going to be one, because we just have one sine here. Then we'll have a period that's going to be two pi over b. Your b value is the coefficient in front of that x term, so it's still one. So it's going to be two pi over one, so we'll end up with 2 pi for the period. Your c value here is going to be negative pi over 2, all right? And then it's going to be over 1. Now, the reason my c value is going to be negative pi over 2 is because remember, according to your original format, we had a sine of bx minus c plus d. Remember, that's the opposite value of c that's inside of the parentheses there. Therefore, when gathering your c value, you have to change this sign, whatever it is, to write down your c value. So that's why I'm using a negative power over 2. So anytime we have anything over 1, it's just itself. So our phase shift is going to be negative power over 2, which means we start at negative power over 2 on our x-axis. Then we have 0 for our vertical shift. And so next we have the increments. And remember the increments are always the period divided by 4. So here 2 pi over 4 is going to reduce to pi over 2. And that's it. Okay? So let's check out our x values that we'll use in our xy chart after I identify the values. Okay. So our amplitude was 1, period is 2 pi, phase shift is negative pi over 2, Vertical shift is zero, and our increments are pi over two. So we'll start with our phase shift at negative pi over two. That'll be our first value. Then adding pi over two each time, that gives us zero. Then pi over two. Then pi. Then three pi over two. All right, so remember, we only need five values for that first period. And notice how we started at negative pi over 2, which was our phase shift. But if you take the difference of 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 2, you'll end up with 4 pi over 2, in other words, 2 pi. So that confirms that our period is still 2 pi in length. Okay, so let's plug in the values into our original function. Plugging in negative pi over 2 plus pi over 2, you end up with the sine of 0, which is 0. Plugging in 0, you'll end up with 0 plus pi over 2, which is pi over 2, and sine at pi over 2 is 1. Then plugging in pi over 2, pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is going to give us 2 pi over 2, which is just pi. Sine at pi is going to be 0. Plugging in pi, pi plus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2, and sine at 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And then finally, plugging in 3 pi over 2 plus pi over 2, that gives us 2 pi. Sine at 2 pi is 0. So these are the five points that it will be plotting on our graph. All right, so let's check it out, right? Okay, so at negative pi over 2, I have a point at 0. Then at 0, I'm at 1. Next, at pi over 2, I'll be at 0. At pi, I'll be at negative 1. And then at 3 pi over 2, I'm at 0 again. OK. So these are going to be our five points. Notice that our graph has been shifted over pi over 2 places to the left. So we started out with sine of x plus pi over 2. Anytime you have a positive value inside of the parentheses, you're going to have a horizontal shift to the left. If it's going to be negative, that shift will be to the right. It's the opposite direction when you're dealing inside of the parentheses. OK? So here, I'm going to go ahead and connect the dots. Let's go ahead and do this. Remember, if you need more than one period for your teacher or your textbook, then go ahead and just duplicate these same values either to the left or to the right, and you'll be just fine, OK? Just map it over. OK, so that's problem number three, ladies and gentlemen. That does it for that problem. OK, next we have problem number four. We have y equals to negative sine of 2x. Let's check out this problem and see what happens here. In this problem, our amplitude is going to be negative 1. And remember, it's always the absolute value of that first coefficient. So the absolute value of negative 1 is just 1. Then I have a b value here. This is going to be 2 pi over 2, which simplifies to pi. So here, my period is just pi this time. I don't have a c value, so that's going to be 0 over 2, which just gives me 0 for my phase shift. And then for the vertical shift, it's also 0. And then finally, for the increments, it's the period divided by 4. So that means that my increments are going to be pi over 4 in length. OK? Let's go ahead and highlight those values, those critical values that we had to find. All right. Once again, recapping over that, our amplitude is 1 for this problem. We'll also have a period of pi. Our phase shift is 0, and our vertical shift is 0, and our 
increments are going to be pi over 4. So this time, ladies and gentlemen, notice that your period is different. It's just pi this time. And that our increments are different. It's pi over 4 this time. So once again, our x values will start, our graph starts at the phase shift. So we'll start at 0. From there, to get your next values, you'll add and keep adding pi over 4. So I'll end up with pi over 4 as the next x value that I use in my domain. Then I'll have pi over 2. Then I'll have 3 pi over 4. And then finally, I'll end up with pi. Notice that the difference from 0 to pi is pi in length, ladies and gentlemen. So we know that part is correct. Next, we'll be plugging in these values and coming up with our y values. So starting out, I'll plug in 0 in for x, and 2 times 0 is 0, sine at 0 is 0, and then the opposite of 0 is just still 0. There is no opposite of 0, right? It's just 0. Then plugging in pi over 4. 2 times pi over 4 is going to be pi over 2. Sine at pi over 2 is 1, but then I have the opposite of that value, so that gives me negative 1. Then plugging in pi over 2, 2 times pi over 2 is just pi, and sine at pi is 0, and then the opposite of 0 is still going to be 0. Plugging in 3 pi over 4, I have 2 times 3 pi over 4, which gives me 3 pi over 2, and sine at 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. The opposite of negative 1 is positive 1. Finally, plugging in pi, 2 times pi is going to be 2 pi. So sine of 2 pi is 0, and the opposite of that is 0. So here we have our five points that we'll be plotting. So let's check it out. Remember, our first one is going to be at 0, 0. So here I have a point at 0, 0. Then at pi over 4, I'll be at negative 1. At pi over 2, I'm going to be at 0. At 3 pi over 4, I'm at positive 1. And at pi, I'm at 0. So notice that because we had that horizontal shrink occur because of our b value being 2 this time, notice that we have our entire graph of the sine function occur in half of the length. All right, It just goes from 0 to pi instead of 0 to 2 pi, which is the normal period for the sine function. So let's go ahead and connect the dots on this. All right. There we go. Great. And so that's going to be the graph that you have for problem number 4, that y equals to negative sine 2x done and done ladies and gentlemen so that's going to do it for today's lesson on graphing the sine function i hope that helped you greatly and as always please rate comment and subscribe once again this is mr witt with fort ben tutoring thanks a lot bye we certainly hope you enjoyed today's mathematic presentations did you learn anything do you need to review your notes take a deep breath and congratulate yourself i am learning mathematicals